It is Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today on the show, we look back at last night's racing action for the World of Outlaws and Short Track Super Series. We've got a young driver that you should keep an eye on, and there are also new podcast episodes and today's streaming schedule to take a look at, so let's jump in. In last night's Short Track Super Series North Region feature at Outlaw Speedway, most of the names you would have expected to run up front certainly did so. We had a wild battle to the finish. But in the end, it was a first-time winner in the hurricane, Steve Payne, who sat on the pole and grabbed the $5,000 victory, leading all 50 laps. Down the stretch, he held off challenges from Anthony Perego and Mike Mahaney, with Mahaney ending up second, Perego third, Stuart Friesen fourth, and Matt Shepard fifth. In the closing laps, you could have just about thrown a blanket over the top five. And out of turn two on the final lap, we had a three-wide battle for the lead. But Payne got clear down the backstretch and drove away to the win. Leaving last night, the points haven't been officially updated for the North Region. But if my math is correct, Perego should still be out front with Mahaney now second. The string of Tuesday night modified races continues for the Short Track Super Series next week when the South Region takes on the New Egypt Speedway on May 25th. If you missed last night's racing, you can watch the full program or highlights over at Flow Racing. The World of Outlaws were back in action last night after a busy week in Pennsylvania. They took on the reconfigured Bridgeport Motorsports Park in New Jersey uh, before they head to Ohio this coming weekend. Carson Macedo had a near-perfect night, going quick time and setting a new track record at 13.215 seconds around the new 4 tenths mile track. He also won his heat race from the pole. He drew the pole of the dash and then won it to start out front for the feature. But I say nearly perfect because Macedo was beat out in the night's feature. He led the first 11 laps before four-starting Logan Schuhart ran him down and took the lead on lap 12. Macedo made several attempts to re- uh, regain the top spot, but Schuhart fought him off each time, and one of those was thanks to a timely caution. Schuhart led the final 19 laps en route to his second win of the season, with Macedo finishing second, Anthony Macri third, Donnie Schatz fourth, and Sheldon Hoddenshield was fifth. This reconfigured Bridgeport was really fun to watch. The way the track kind of sets up now with the banking and stuff in the corners, we saw guys run on the top, guys run on the bottom, big sliders. Uh, certainly a neat racetrack there now. As we talked about, it's been a rough month for Schuhart as he entered last night with six finishes of 15th or worse in his last 12 races. His performance last night reminded us of what he's capable of and what we thought we would probably see more of from him in that sharp racing team this season. But the bad luck and tough finishes can pile up quick with the Outlaws when things aren't going your way. And he's all the way back to 7th in the standings, even with last night's win. It was Schuhart's first victory since February 7th at Volusia, and hopefully this win can provide that team some momentum going forward to try and claw their way back into the top five. I was a little surprised the posse contingent wasn't more represented last night, especially since Bridgeport is only about two hours from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We did see Macri, Danny Dietrich, Freddie Raymer, Ryan Smith, Brent Marks, and a few others, but not nearly as many as I thought we would. Some notables that race at Bridgeport in April who were missing last night included Tim Schaefer, Lucas Wolf, Matt Campbell, Chase Dietz, and Billy Dietrich. The other big storyline from last night is the outlaw point standings continue to tighten. Brad Sweet finished ahead of David Gravel, so the top two are now 68 points apart, but uh, Macedo, Hoddenshield, Schatz, and Schuhart all made up ground. Sweet did win last Wednesday night at Lincoln, but in his last six races, he has four finishes outside the top 10. And his trending 5-race and 10-race average finishes are down compared to his total 2021 average finish. He hasn't quite had the same speed in the last 10 days, including at Eldora, and that has allowed Gravel and Macedo to close. Kind of expected Sweet to not be super great in Pennsylvania, as that has been an issue for him in the past, but not at Eldora. Eldora has been very good to Sweet in his career. Macedo and the Jason Johnson Racing 41 have been good lately, and outside of a 20th at Eldora and a 16th at Williams Grove, they have 14 top 8 finishes in their last 16 races. And even though he isn't in the points chase, Brent Marks was good again last night, finishing 6th and bringing his average finish over the last 5 races to a series best 4.6. He is going to continue racing with the series through the week. The Outlaws are off today and tomorrow, but have two shows in Ohio this weekend, Friday night at Attica and Saturday night at Sharon Speedway. 
Hopefully you stuck around after the World of Outlaws race on Dirt Vision last night to watch the modified race at Bridgeport because it turned into a fantastic battle to the finish. We saw multiple lead changes amongst Troy Ale, Dominic Buffalino, Ryan Watt, and 8th starting Ryan Godown. With Godown flashing past both Watt and Buffalino in one lap late in a going to seize control, he held on in the final laps to take the win with Watt 2nd, Buffalino 3rd, Ale 4th, and Jeff Strunk in 5th. Briggs Danner finished 7th in the race, and that's notable because of what he's been doing so far this season. He swept the USAC East Coast Sprint Car races over the weekend at Bedford and Grandview, and is currently that series points leader with three, win, uh, three wins in four races. He also recently picked up two top 10s in USAC National Sprint Car Competition at Grandview and Big Diamond. Besides the modified and sprint car, Danner is also slated for some midget races and runs speedsters and micros. He's definitely one to keep an eye on in the coming years. I believe he's 19 and is clearly not afraid to get into any type of race car. There are lots of new dirt racing podcast episodes this week, including Peter Murphy, Aaron Reitzel, and Kyle Reinhardt on Wing Nation. Lad Pedal has new eps with Paul McMahon and CJ Leary. Stick Signals has Brent Larson. The Rigsby Report has Dustin Jarrett. Suave Talk has Brandon Overton. Passing Points has Brady Bacon. The Midwest Autosports Podcast has Chance Siskowski. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, The Dirt from Knoxville, Ohio Dirt, and Wednesdays with Wayne. A lot of dirt in these podcast names. For a list of shows and episodes, visit dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Also, if you missed it, don't forget to check out the new Conversations episode with Sprint Car Crew Chief Heath Moyle. It's on YouTube and in the podcast feed. There are three items, again, on the streaming schedule for tonight. Dirt Vision has Dirt Car Esports action that you can watch for free, and Flow Racing has Flow 24-7 and Racing from Action Track USA in Pennsylvania. And speaking of Briggs Danner, I believe he will be in action tonight at the Action Track. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Wednesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily where you get podcasts plus YouTube and Facebook. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and leave a review. Follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. That's D-I-R-T-R-A-C-K-R. You can check out the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 